private sector is absolutely key in, in developing. In Uganda, in the, in the space that it's, it's been in the last three years, I think Uganda has attracted more FDI than any other country in East Africa. Um, and that has been primarily driven by its very liberal policies. Uh, Uganda is a very um, kind of easy place to do business. Um, capital, you can bring capital in and take it out without any restrictions. And frankly, I think it has demonstrated over the last 12 years uh, with huge economic growth that there's a good market here. So uh, we've seen a lot of investments in several sectors, um, in the consumer sector, telcos, financial sector. And we're beginning to see a lot of investment in the oil and gas space. Um, we anticipate that the oil and gas sector will eventually supersede and exceed all these other sectors that have primarily been the areas of focus in the last few years. Um, and we expect that oil and gas will contribute in excess of 30% of GDP um, when it starts pumping. And, you know, and that's coming from a very, very small number. Um, so obviously the, the rules and regulations and policy that the Ugandan government has pursued uh, across the, um, over the last 20, several years and a couple of decades um, has been very, very um, useful in, in attracting investment. And we've seen significant number of foreign entities come through um, and invest here. In fact, I work for a bank that's 80% owned by a foreign bank in South Africa. And I think if you walk around Kampala, you see a lot of the huge brands um, in se several sectors. Um, so Uganda remains a very attractive place, and we expect that um, it will continue to play a huge role in attracting FDI. Uh, with oil and gas specifically, um, we obviously have a very active uh, downstream oil and gas sector. We import a lot of oil um, for white goods primarily, because we're a landlocked country that comes through Mombasa. We are beginning to see Uganda emerge as an oil and gas player. So there's a lot of preparation and investment going into the midstream and the, down, and the upstream sector. And so we will see a lot of um, activity over the next two to three years with the anticipation that oil will start to come out of the ground in 2017, 2018. And there's a critical time frame now when the government's working through several, several pieces. Um, as you're aware, we're trying to do a refinery. We're also going to do a pipeline, two pipelines. It'll be a domestic pipeline to move uh, white good fuel from the refinery into a depot near Kampala uh, so that we can be less reliant on imports of, of white goods. There will also be a, an international pipeline that will take crude uh, from the oil fields connected to Sudan, the Lapset, and then we'll go to Lamu. That's the most preferred route at the moment. Um, that obviously requires a huge amount of reflection on, you know, right of way, um, who the players are, what, what, you know, delineating the roles between the refinery, the pipeline, understanding what the, all the different players in the sector will play. Uh, right now, they're all importing oil. They will be required to start buying oil from the national oil company. Um, there's going to be uh, a national oil company that will have to guarantee throughput into the refinery from the oil fields. All those are policy issues. There's the local content law that needs to be governed uh, and decided. So there's very, very busy government working through all those issues at the moment. But I think one thing is for certain, if history um, will, you know, will show, I think they've always kind of gotten it right uh, from a policy perspective. You know.